for Lord Nityananda so that we can become, you know, purified and be ready to get his blessings. A number of authors, a number of acharyas, had developed projects, uh, devotional intellectual projects on Lord Nityananda. And what Vrindavan Das Thakur has written is very elaborate. God. Krishna Das, Sri Krishna Das Goswami, also has written so much about Lord in his Chaitanya Sertamita. And uh, one of the texts is the Nityananda, uh, here the Chaitanya Bhagavad, which basically uh, here in the In chapter 9, it's about his childhood pastimes. And Lord Nishanali enacted uh, various, I mean, very many pastimes <coughs> when in his childhood from age 1 to 12, he was simply embarked, embarked on enacting pastimes based on his own. Uh, leaders, Krishna's leaders, uh, Lord Ramachandra's leaders, Vamana Dev, Varaha, so many. And all of these are perfectly documented in the literary rights of uh, literary works of uh, to do with uh, the Chetan Bhagwan just some little bit of details. So I would like us to reflect on these points. But don't forget, we should not forget that Lord Nityananda is Lord Bhagaram. Nautam Dastakur has also enunciated that in his uh, wonderful uh, poetry, in wonderful songs. And the main purpose of Lord Nishananda's appearance is to help in serving the mission, facilitating the uh, mission statement of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Like I mentioned yesterday, his main objective is to serve, to serve the mission of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Therefore, even difficult, difficult duties Lord Chaitanya trusted difficult, challenging, challenging duties to Lord Nityananda. And he is also recognized as an Avadut. Avadut means someone who does not follow rules. <coughs> As mentioned sometimes, he will be, in some of his pastimes, he will be nude. <laughs> and Lord Chaitanya will come and chastise him. <laughs> So, many of the things that Lord Nityananda did, or many of his pastimes, cannot be imitated. He also got married and had a good family life, happy family life. So, all of these leaders are meant for us to be able to reflect on and to be able to attain some purification. Now what happens with the activities of the Lord or the incarnations of the Lord, with the activities of ordinary people, is that activities of ordinary people, they just bind us to this material world. The Lila or the pastimes of the Lord, they facilitate our extrication from the charcoals of samsara. And therefore, although Nityananda had appeared to help in 
spread in on serving the mission of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he should not be considered to be an ordinary person. Although he acted as an avadut, he should not be considered to be a man person. Although he got married, he should not be considered to be uh, just a married man. His wife is his internal consort. So, from the readings about his leaders, we got one, info, well, one basic information. He, teach, he taught us how to surrender to Krishna. Why? Because he's the original guru. And with his position as the original guru, if we don't satisfy Lord Nityananda, it is very difficult to attain Krishna. It is very difficult to attain Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And what does Lord Nityananda want from us? <coughs> Hari Nam Sankita. It's simple to come together and glorify Krishna. Is that that simple? Yes. Can you make out the time? Why not? You're not too busy, why should I? Because even when Lord Nityananda appeared, his main business is to remind people about the past times of the Lord. We are prone to forgetfulness. And the reason why he dramatized those past times in like a theater performance was, first of all, if you read something, it's so easy to forget. Now when you uh, learn something from audio visuals, from the screen, it sticks there on your memory longer than the just reading. And when you see some drama performed about a particular phenomenon or a particular subject matter or a particular leela, it is very difficult to disengage the mind from that. And that's one of the reasons why uh, Lord, Lord Nichananda, he realized how people are so foreign in Kali Yoga. And one of the best ways to teach people is not just to speak the philosophy, but to have, let people have a chance of reminding themselves about the pastimes of the Lord in a drama format. When people, that's why people go to the cinemas and what they learn from the cinemas, what they perceive, uh, it never goes, never goes out of, in fact, this is the main reason why audiovisuals have become a big business in the ad, advert industry. Because what you see on the TV, they advertise, see, if even they advertise stool packaged nicely and you see it on the TV, you know, several times. It sticks to your consciousness and you're going to go and look for it to buy it. That's the power of audiovisuals. So, in the same way, uh, Lord Nityananda demonstrating the pastimes of the Lord, reminding them also about the pastimes of Lord Krishna. Like, you know, when uh, he enacted this pastime of Lord uh, Lord, Lord Brahma having to go to uh, with the demigods to bear for uh, to, 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 the, uh, to the ocean to the milk ocean to beg for the Lord to appear he had some kid who hid himself somewhere and then he went with the other boys they went to the bank of the Ganges <laughs> and then they were, they were making prayers <laughs> The earth is overboarding. My dear Lord, please, you come to relieve this art from the burdensome of the demons. And the boy who was hiding somewhere unseen by the members of the public, he responded and he said, Yes, I will take I will take bath in uh, Elvendavan to relieve the earth. From the body, from this body, <laughs> from this body. So, this is the impact that Lord Nichinanda's teachings have 
on the whole of the residence of Yekka Chakra by drama. He performed drama. Uh, people learn from that. They never, they will hardly forget. They will hardly forget. And so, Lanyati Ananda is a perfect teacher. Why? Because he's the original guru. A guru is one who is heavy with knowledge. And he teaches by his own very examples. So Lanyati Ananda, we know he's very much expert in dramatizing the pastimes, his own pastimes, the pastimes of the different incarnations, Krishna, Rama, Varha, different incarnations. And so when he had to enact these pastimes of different leaders, and the people, the people of Eka Chakra, we are watching and seeing all of this, they were mesmerized, they were thinking, well, who is this boy? Who is, who is this boy? How does he go to others? How does he go to know? He's just a small boy. How does he go to know all of these pastimes? But the Lord is so the Supreme Lord, whether it's in the form of a small boy, whether it's in the form of a small, uh, a small baby, he's, he's still the omniscient Lord. He knows everything. He knows past, present, and future. Trikalakya. And he has all of the potencies that could be used for any purpose. And so, this is the confusion that even the demigods have. When, like when Lord Krishna appeared and he was acting as a cowherd boy, even Lord Brahma was bewildered. And Lord Brahma taught, could this be my, my Lord? Because Lord Brahma worships Lord Krishna. Could this be my Lord? And he was doubtful, so he went to uh, make some experiment, he conducted some research. But the result of the research was really devastating. <laughs> so sometimes we may not <laughs> we may doubt doubt is okay uh, but doubt should be reasonable to doubt, to doubt for the sake of doubt it is meaningless and so the people of Eka Chakra they were wondering who this boy could be and to be able to clarify their doubts Lord Nishananda told them, these are my own pastimes. So those who are intelligent, they understand, who? Oh, it's Krishna himself, or Lord Bhagavan himself. So, all of these amazing pastimes are meant to uh, replace the stories, the mundane stories we hear that contaminate us in the material world. And so, I wanted to read something directly from uh, Chaitanya Bhagwat about Lord Nichananda. <coughs> I know his marriage pastime was very, I mean, he's been very intriguing. And if we if you understand the other details about this is child pastimes, that will also be very much enlivening. So I'll just read about the uh, contextual uh, framework of the child pastimes. All glories to Sri Krishna Chaitanya, the ocean of mercy. This is from the Chaitanya Bhagavad. All glories to Nityananda Prabhu, the friend of the helpless. You see, if you are helpless, you don't have friends. If you don't have money, you don't have friends. If you don't have good education, if you are just a beggar on the road, you don't have friends. And Lord Nityananda is a friend of the helpless. He's so merciful. He makes himself available for everyone. And we are so helpless in Kali Yuga that we don't know our left and right. And therefore, the appearance of Lord Nityananda is to be able to help those of us especially for me, who does not know his left and right, to get some leverage from the ocean of uh, samsara, from the ocean of material existence. All glories to the life and soul of Sri Advaita Chandra, 
All glory is to he who is the only shelter of Srivas uh, and Gadadar. All glories to Vishambhar, the son of Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Devi, who is always beloved by his devotees and followers. Before the advent of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Ananta Sesh, Ananta Dev himself had appeared on the order of the Lord. In other words, before Lord Chaitanya appeared, you know, Krishna had arranged, or Lord Chaitanya had arranged for Ananta Dev. Ananta Dev is just an expansion of uh, Lord Bhagavan and not different from uh, Lord Nityananda. So before Lord Chaitanya had to come, I mean, it's just a common thing. If a president of a country wants to go to visit a place, uh, he sends his, uh, some of his entourage, his close buddhis, he sends them to go to the place, to go and investigate, to set things right, to check whether the place is appropriate for him to come. So Lord Nityananda, he appeared on the order of the Supreme Lord to be able to prepare the ground for Lord Chaitanya's coming. Uh, Lord Nityananda's father's name was Hadai Oja and his mother's name was Padmavati. He appeared in the village of Ekachakra in Radhadesh in Goda from infancy, he was sober, highly intelligent, and supremely qualified. The baby boy was millions of times more beautiful than Cupid. Lord Nityananda, you know, we, we talk about beauty. When we talk about beauty, we, talk, we think about girls or women. But Lord Nityananda, I mean, Lord Krishna, people see Lord Krishna on the Krishna book, uh, they ask, the first thing they ask, who is this girl, who is this woman? Because of his beauty. And Lord Nityananda is described in the Chaitanya Bhagavad as beauty personified, or millions of times more beautiful than Cupid. Cupid bewilders demigods, even demigods, Cupid bewilders them. So Lord Nityananda, imagine his beauty, how he could bewilder uh, anyone uh, in this universe. But why does the Lord have to take up such uh, amazing form, such beauty? To attract the conditioned souls. Because we are attracted to beauty. And just are being attracted to the Lord because of his beautiful uh, uh, form, the conditioned soul has a chance to become purified. Now, Conscious soul may not be interested in philosophy. May not be interested in talking about hearing anything religious. But conscious souls, they are attracted to beauty. <laughs> Even poor people, they are attracted to beauty. You know, I was just watching that through, uh, from the window in the room there, and I saw, you know, that hearth there, and there are a lot of children there. So they may, be, they may be poor, but, you know, they like to enjoy. They like beauty. So whether someone is interested in high philosophy, someone is not interested in high philosophy, we are generally interested or attracted to beauty. And so Lord Nichiren having to take just a beautiful form uh, facilitates our curiosity and our attraction to the Lord. And so even Lord Krishna is mentioned, how if you he walks in the streets of Mathura, you know, the ladies, they go to the top of their roofs. In India, this is a very common thing that people build structures, build houses, and, you know, they use a decking for the roof. And so children can go there and play. And so when Krishna has to pass through the streets of Mathura, you know, the ladies, they'll go to the top of the roof to have darshan of the Lord. And why? Because the Lord is so enchanting. So all of the incarnations of the Lord, they are so enchanting that people naturally become attracted to, uh, to the Lord. And even uh, 
against, sometimes even against their own will because they just attracted to the beauty of the Lord. So Lord Nichananda, his father was Hadai Oja and the mom was uh, Padmawati. I mentioned yesterday the very uh, powerful personality trait of Padmawati. People who bear the name Padmawati, they have special features, they're very intelligent and they are also uh, they're, they're also not straightforward most times. They say, they say things in not a straightforward way. Uh, so, like the case, I mentioned how the case of uh, uh, Krishna, uh, Krishna's grand, paternal grandmother, uh, Padmawati, she was always indirect. She says things very indirectly. But Ugrasena understands, understood his wife. And he, she, he will act accordingly. In those days, the kings, they follow the instructions of their wives because they know that women are, so, are, are eight or nine times more, more socially intelligent than men. Women are very meticulous. So they get guidance. The men, the kings, they get guidance from the women. They consult with their wives before they take a decision. And, you know, even in India, uh, Gandhi, uh, the wife told him not to go out that day. Remember? The wife told him not to go out that day, the day he was assassinated. But, you know, the modern day uh, <laughs> people don't care about what women say. <laughs> he got killed. So, Padmawati is a very uh, special name, and uh, that is Nityananda's mother. So, imagine how the Lord makes this wonderful choice of appearing in the family of very eloquent people, intelligent people, and people who have, you know, that type of mindset of always trying to use their potentials or their resources to influence a positive change in the environment, positive spiritual advancement in the environment. From the moment of his birth, they appeared within the rather dish all auspiciousness. You know, when someone is born, when someone is born, and there's a transformation in the environment, and that from transformation in the setting, it could be understood that he's not an ordinary person. That was the case of Lord Nishinanda. When he appeared, the whole of Radhidesh was transformed. All varieties of famine, poverty, and unhappiness immediately disappeared. So sometimes people, people say, you know, someone who has a mystic power is an incarnation. But the people around them, they are still suffering. I remember somebody, somebody had approached back to Chaitanya Swami in Africa in those days. And then he said, the incarnation of God is on the planet. He's here. He wants to see you. So he asked this, uh, his agent or disciple, he said, are you a vegetarian? He said, no. He said, then he responded that if, the, if, if you are following God, if God is right there with you, and you're not even able to control your senses to be a vegetarian, I'm not ready to see that type of God. <laughs> <laughs> so Lord Nityananda's appearance influenced, you know, auspiciousness. People had transformation just by the appearance of the incarnation of the Lord. Everything is transformed. It's the same way when Krishna appeared. When Ramachandra appeared in the same way. So people in Kali Yoga, we're so dull witted. We don't read the scriptures. And so anybody can come and tell us I'm an incarnation. Or any of their followers can come to tell us an incarnation. I'm, uh, any mystic can come to tell us we are an incarnation of God. But there are different descriptions given in the scriptures, especially in the Vedic scriptures. And the Vedic scriptures also uh, stipulates the expected incarnations. For instance, before Lord Chaitanya appeared, Lord, before Lord Nityananda appeared, the, the, it's all been stipulated in the Vedic literatures. And so, people don't read anything, and whatever they see, they make a conclusion based on mysticism. What you can do, if you can produce some arches, then you become God. But Lord Nityananda is the supreme personality of God, that is Lord Balaram. And he appeared to be able to facilitate a transformative spiritual change in the whole, on the whole planet. And the people of Echo Chakra, they were more than well blessed because that is 
where Ranish Ananda actually had appeared. On the day that Sri Gora Chandra made his advent in Sridham Navadvip, this is the day that Lord Chaitanya appeared. He, he was he was in Eka Chakra. And now when Lord Chaitanya appeared in uh, when Chaitanya was born in Navadvip in Mayapodya, uh Lord Chinanda knew and he roared. He roared like a lion that reverb his 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 voice reverberated the whole planet. And people were wondering what type of thunder is this? So, it takes sages to be able to evaluate, to be able to understand the activities of the Lord. Ordinary people cannot understand. But we find that His very manifestation is the cause of all speciousness. He was far away, but He knew what was happening also far away. Like, He was in Ekka Chakra, and he knew that Lord Chaitanya had appeared, so he roared. And that reverberation caused a lot of uh, speculations. People were uh, speculating as to what could have caused that reverberation, whether the wall, uh, whether there is some big thunder or something else is happening. But no, there was no thunder. It was Lord Nichananda. I mean, exclaiming, being in a joyous mood, and shouting about the appearance of the Lord. The vast universe was provided with the sound of his cries, and the whole world became astonished. Some said, this is the speculation of some people, a thunderbolt had descended to earth. Many could understand that, the mightly disturbance was a result of some divine power. Some said, we know the cause. The master of Goda has spoken in a voice of thunder. And in this way, everyone gave their different opinions. But by the power of the illusory energy of Krishna, no one could recognize the transcendental position of Nityananda Prabhu. So, the eternal energy covered up the people of Echo Chakra because if that was not done and if they got to know that this is the Supreme Lord, then, you know, people are forced to worship Him with all reverence. So now, it's only people who have a lot of pious merit who can identify and <clears throat> although He was right there in Echo Chakra, a number of people couldn't really, you know, uh, figure out who this, who Lord Nishinanda was. In this way, keeping his divine nature unmanifest, the Supreme Lord, uh, the Supreme Lord Nishinanda Prabhu, delighted in the company of children, in all the games that the Lord played with the children. In other words, in all the pastimes. Now, children are very dear to Krishna. So you're doing wonderful service here, nurturing the children. So when the Lord appeared, he played with children. Even Krishna, when he appeared, he, he played with children. Quiet boys. He didn't, he didn't go to make friends with adults or play around with adults. So children are very dear to Krishna. Why? Because the children are innocent. They are not involved in sinful activities. In fact, in most cases, they don't even have any bearing of karma, karmic reactions. Their hearts are clean. And whatever you tell them, they take it hook, line, and sinker. You know what that means? We take something hook, line, and sinker? Huh? What? As it is. Yes. Who, who knows what hook, lion, and sinker means? You take the children, they take whatever Krishna, whatever Balagam says, or whatever Manichananda says, a hook, lion, and sinker. Without any doubt. 
They completely accept what is what is said. Now, for the grown-up people, they full of you know, <laughs> full of doubts. <laughs> so even even the supreme personality of God appears, grown-up people will doubt uh, about the personality who had appeared. But then the children, uh, no, they're very they're very clean, they're pure, and so giving quality. Uh, uh, quality time to children, training children, is a very important service in devotional culture. And you people are doing that here. And everyone here, they seem to be very, I mean, is obviously very enthused. So that's a good, that's a very good sign. Anybody who comes here will, will, give, will have that positive impression. Especially when children in the morning, you know, you don't find children in the morning in the different homes. You know, dancing and you know, singing. Huh? Sometimes it's even a problem to get them to go to school. <laughs> so, yeah, you're doing this service you're doing here is very wonderful, and Lord Bara is very pleased with the service you're doing here because you're nurturing children. And Lord Bara himself was an exponent of nurturing of children. His pastimes, he conducted with children. His leelas, he conducted with children. And his playmates, his games and everything was with children. So he loved children. And if you love children, you are satisfying love Balaram. If you, if, you, if you hate children, then you are in problem, problem with Balaram. Because children are Balaram's, uh, uh, Balaram's uh, companions. Even Lord Krishna, when he appeared. So, you know, sometimes we read the scriptures, but the reflection of, of the past times and we relate that to our present day situation makes a lot of meaning. Children are very important in our lives. Children are important in our families. But not only are children important in our lives and in our families or in our society, children are very, very dear to the Supreme Personality of God because they are innocent. They are not involved in sinful activities. And it's so easy for them to go back home, back to God. If their, if their mindsets, if their culture is tailored towards devotional service at this early stage of their lives. And Lord Krishna mentions in the Gita that there is no one, who is, that is no one more dear to him than the, uh, the person who is culturing his, uh, his devotees, who is educating his devotees, who is spearheading projects regarding how people should be able to understand and appreciate Krishna consciousness. And you're doing that here, so rest assured Krishna is very pleased with you. So Krishna is very pleased with you, okay? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Indeed, their play was nothing but the Lila of the Lord. Nityananda Prabhu will hold an assembly of the gods of the gods with one of the children acting the part of art, the part of the art presenting the petition of the demigods to the Supreme Lord Vishnu. All of them will go along with the art to the banks of the river where together they will pray to, uh, to the hidden, hidden Lord of the universe. I mentioned that, you know, when they, they took the children to the bank of the Ganges and then they pray, going to pray to Shiro Dakashaya Vishnu at the milk ocean to beg for uh, him to appear, you know, to take bed, to leverage the burden of the earth. That time, you know, there was so much of chaos, Kamsa and all of these other demons, they're causing so much trouble. And then the, the person acting as Shiro Dakashaya Vishnu was hiding. He says, I will shortly be born in the cowherd village of Mathura. So the Chaitanya Bhagavad uh, gives so much details about the appearance of Lord Nichinanda. There's another book called Chaitanya Charta, um, Nichinanda Charitamita, and that is like everything is about John Lord Nichinanda and so much, so much detail. Another day, Lord Nichinanda Prabhu and his child friends will gather in a village to celebrate the marriage of Vasudeva and Devaki. So they enacted different pastimes. Marriage of them. 
So can you just imagine children acting different? Do you get to shoot your kids to also act some dramas here sometimes? Yeah, it's very, very, it's very. The children they can be really very good, you know, uh, theater artists. They do very good in drama. Huh? Okay. Yeah, and they they do they are participate, and they get purified. They don't forget the story. They don't forget the Leela because they participated in, 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 in it. That is the beauty of theater, theater arts. Those who get involved in it, they may not even read the book, but they practically were involved in the action. So it never goes out of their memory. You read the books, it's so easy to forget. Kali Yoga, you know, we are prone to forgetfulness. But those who participate in the uh, in the drama or in theater art performance, they hardly will forget. Another time he dressed up one of his child friends as Putana, you know. <laughs> uh, so he was, you know, enacting all these different pastimes uh, for a little child, uh, a preteen child to be acting like that. Uh, it's a lot of, it gives the, 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 the villagers or the uh, denizens of Eka Chakra a lot of enthusiasm and motivation for, for them to be able to continue go doing what they are doing. Because we like to see children acting in different ways. In fact, the reason why a number of people I know in America, they have problems when they divorce, then they go to court, they're struggling, who keeps the children? Because, you know, people, we like to see the children act in different ways and that gives us amusement. So Lord Injananda, he was acting in different ways and he gives, him, he gives a, a lot of amuse, uh, amusement and satisfaction to the, uh, to the inhabitants of Eka Chakra. He's all like, like an entertainer. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> we like to go to the cinema. The, cin the cinema is right there, free. So, yeah, drama... Uh, Enactment regarding the past sense of the Lord, they are very much uh, elevated. And when we get involved in that, it doesn't, it doesn't quickly go away from our consciousness. Once having built a cart made of reeds, with the help of the children, Nityananda broke it. Nityananda would bring his child friends to the house of the local milkmaid. And sometimes he gets his friends and go to the neighbor, uh, neighborhoods to steal milk. Krishna was also stealing milk and butter. No? So he, he would do that. And, you know, people would be wondering, oh, this boy is a thief. And, you know, but everything belongs to the Lord. I mean, it's like when someone, one of the vegetables, he accused Krishna. When he caught him one time and accused him that, oh, you're a thief. He said, everything belongs to me. <laughs> <laughs> He couldn't, he couldn't contain it, so he just, you know, proclaimed that, you know. <laughs> One day, uh, having made serpents, <laughs> having made serpents out of leaves, uh, leaves of trees, he brought the children to a pond. One of the children would enter the water and float motionless. Nityananda and Prabhu would awaken him. One day he took the children into a groove of palm, re palm reeds where they played at killing the demons, Danuka, tasting the palm fruits known as tal fruits. He would often go to the passion grounds and there play many different games with the children. So, we see, Hadai Pandit was not. Uh, wasn't a Vaishya. He was a Pandit. But Lord Nishananda, he will, he gather, he gather his friends, his child friends, and they go to the pasturing grounds. All part of the Leela of demonstrating Krishna's, Krishna's pastimes. So, because the Lord came to remind us about the pastimes of the Lord, pastimes of Lord Krishna and his other incarnations. His major duty was to see that people are refreshed 
in their consciousness about this wonderful past tense which bring about purification. Because we want to see things. We want to experience things. We want to hear something. We want to be involved in something that could sustain our social values, spiritual values, or even professional values. And especially for the Brahmins, it was an amazing experience for them because the Lord, Lord Nityananda, was just reminding them about the past times of Lord Krishna or the past times of Lord Ramachandra. And we see that this is how a devotee live, live their life, always engaged in thinking of Krishna and his different past times. Manmana, Baba Mahabhat, Mamiyazi, Mamnamasko. So, thinking of Krishna always implies that all of our activities should be tailored towards uh, reminding us about the past times of the Lord. Even when we have to chant, we are glorifying Lord Krishna. When we have to engage in drama, it's part of the glorification of the Lord because we are reminding ourselves and the spectators, the audience, about the glories of the Lord. So Lord Balaram, um, uh, Lord Nishananda, was a perfect preacher. He preaches in such uh, uh, audacious ways that when he does something, when he conducts this, uh, this lilas in form of a drama or in form of theater arts, it sticks to the heart of the audience. And <coughs> learning through or getting information or learning uh, from dramatic experience is something that if you, if you, if you make a research you find this is one of those most powerful tools of learning. It sticks to the heart. You don't forget. And so Lord Nichananda has come basically to en enable us not to forget Krishna by demonstrating different pastimes in the form of theater arts. Uh, I think one of our swamis has also been very much involved in theater arts. Uh, what's his name? Bhakti Mark Swami. Yeah, so some, sometimes people could wonder, oh, why this? Who would you read philosophy? Why all this drama? But Nityananda is the Acharya of theatre arts. He's the Acharya of drama. And because he used the drama to teach people Krishna consciousness. And those teachings are easy, easier to absorb than simply sitting down and listening to philosophy or reading. Even a child can go catch up with that. The child may not understand big philosophy, but the, the drama you perform, oh, they can tell you that story. Even after 10 years, they will tell you the story. That is the power of theater arts. So, when we engage in different services, we understand that the idea is to remind us about the past tense of the Lord, to remind us about Krishna, to how to think about Krishna. And drama is a perfect way, the most powerful tool in the learning industry. Lord Nityananda appeared to teach people about Krishna consciousness, even as a child, through theater arts. Any comments? Yes. I was in that Uh, ah. But we see the like even in Madhavi world like past time, uh Ramadan Chari, one of his disciples was attracted to one uh, beautiful girl. He was just uh, looking uh, at the <coughs> Then Lord uh Ramadan Chari just showed him the beautiful eyes of the Lord and he was enchanted by the beautiful vision. 
So why then uh, people like Ramana or other they are they were not attracted to uh, Lord Shri, also they were attracted to Mother Sita. Because they are de de demons. <laughs> <laughs> Demon is someone who is averse to Krishna consciousness. So <laughs> you may I mean it's like the demons uh, and there are a number of small small modern ravenous in our in our movement too. You know that? Yes. There are a number of small small ravenous, modern ravenous in our movement. Yes. In this school. The epitome of Ravana's uh, character trait is that he was attracted to another person's wife. <laughs> there are so many women who are not married. <laughs> Ravana was attracted to someone's wife. And he got killed. So, and this is, is dominant. I was, you know, in, in Mayapur, a number of people number of families they cook for me on different days and so one day I was just uh, finding out from the one of the boys who is uh, helping me now uh, this person because you know I don't want I don't want people who are who don't have a means of subsistence to be using their resources to to buy, to buy food and cook for me so I was asking what is the job of this uh, family what is the job of the husband what is the so in one case I was asking, and then he said, oh, this person, the family, is the daughter who is maintaining the family. The daughter is doing, young girl, she's doing, she's a scientist, she's doing a PhD program in some, uh, in some science field, and from the, you know, stipend she got from the government, she's able to maintain the family. But why? Young girl, she should just... Uh, use use the money in the way she wants and uh, perhaps bank the money for the future. But no, the father is not there. Where is the father? It's initiated. He went away with another woman. <coughs> but that's what Ravana did. Although Ravana's case was foiled because, you know, Sita deceived him. He, he just gave, she just gave him the f a false, false, well. false sitter, false wife. <laughs> so, and I've also, I've, I've seen several cases in other places. Okay. So, where, and they have beautiful wives. This lady I'm talking about, the mother of this girl, this the PhD student, yeah. she is so politically beautiful. <laughs> so, uh, they may even have beautiful, beautiful wives, but they go after another person's wife. So they don't see Krishna's beauty. They're trying to gratify their senses. And so they're not able to perceive, they're not able to have that uh, sense of belonging or to become attracted to Krishna. Krishna, even Kubja, was attracted to Krishna. But Kamsa wanted to kill Krishna. He was attracted to Krishna too, but in a negative way to kill him. So there are activities, anukul and practical, activities that we engage in that are not favorable to devotional service or uh, and activities that are favorable to devotional service. That is the devotional service that we perform to please Krishna. So the devotee is attracted to Krishna. The demon, he wants Krishna's resources. He doesn't see the beauty of Krishna. He sees the beauty of his illusory energy. He wants Krishna's resources. He exploits Krishna's resources. <coughs> That's the nature of demons. So there is, you ask, the bottom line of your yeah, response to your question is, people who are not attracted to Krishna, uh, they are attached to his illusory energy. So they are demons. They have, or if you don't want to use the word demon, you could say they have phenomenological mindset. I remember using that technology when I was describing, uh, uh, what do you call? Hiranyaka Sipo. And I gave the whole story of Hiranyaka Sipo 
in one publication, you know? And that publication is a journal of financial crime. And they, they publish it. <laughs> <laughs> because I use, the, instead of using the, the, the term demon, I use the term phenomenological mindset. And I explain all the explanation Krishna gave about demons in the back of my gate. That's what I gave. But just the, because the heading is, is very attractive, phenomenological mindset. So this, they thought this is a new. This is a this is this is a new phenomenon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, the demons they are attracted to the illusory energy. This is the nature of this material world. If you go to talk to talk somebody about Krishna directly, more in some cases so called intellectuals, they will say, I don't believe in God. Krishna is so beautiful, but they will tell you I don't believe in God. Tell me something else. But the same thing, you package it in a different way, then they say, tell me more. This is very good. <laughs> so we have all these small, small demons. We have to think of several ways on how to, you know, give them Krishna. They may not be attracted to the beauty of Krishna, but we have, we have to figure out how to help them. Yeah, so, bottom line to your question, you are not attracted to Krishna despite the beauty of Krishna. They are not attracted to the Balaram, despite the beauty of Balaram. They are not attracted to Lord uh, Nityananda, despite his beauty. In fact, someone break Nityananda's hand, Jagai Madai. He's so beautiful, but someone, <laughs> someone is just <laughs> openly antagonistic. And because he felt that Nityananda is coming to check his sense gratification. Yes. So when you try to present philosophy to check, to apparently check someone's gratification, they get angry. I, I remember I did some, I, I, I made some write up sometime about uh, political sex scandals, how to remedy the situation. And then I sent it to one journal for publication. And then the editor, editor, he sent the comments of the reviewers to me. And one of the reviewers, he was so angry with me. And this question was, and I never, I never mentioned anything about masturbation, that people, you know, professors should not masturbate. I didn't mention anything like that. I only mentioned about how people are not able to control their senses. They have attained a very high profile position and within a twinkle of an eye, they are down trodden. They kicked out from the office because of lack of control of the sex appetite. And then one of these uh, reviewers, he said, he, he, he made some comment, which is completely out of context. He said, you mean we should not masturbate? I didn't talk anything about masturbation. <laughs> so when, when you say something that, you know, uh, touches some people, it, it seems that he wants to check their sense gratification. They're just angry. So Lord Nityananda, he was preaching and just telling Jagai Mandai to chant Hare Krishna. You know, they got very upset. It's like, you want to stop us from drinking, taking intoxication? Take this. He is there. So, the incidents of Lord Nityananda should give us a lesson. We preach it to people. We have to be aware that if they are sense gratifiers, they're not just going to nod their head and tell us, yes, 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 what you say. They'll be angry and sometimes even attack us. So yeah, people are not attracted to the beauty of the Lord. They're attracted to the, his bi shakti, external energy. They are, they are literally, they have phenomenological mindset. Any other comments? Yeah, yeah. They want to be Krishna. And the person who tells them philosophy, they become angry and critical and angry about you. Like, Why yeah. are you attacking my <laughs> Yeah. We think that to accept the philosophy and even preach it is so easy. <laughs> but no, it's not so easy. <laughs> it's not so easy. Yeah. Huh? 
I can't, I, I don't get you. Congratulations of the Lord are what? Can you give him a mic? Sure, sure, yeah. So, now you can have like, what branches are present? But the in this appearance, uh, um, it's also predicted in the, in the sense, I don't remember the exact one, but in the case of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, no, <coughs> in the case of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is practically there even in the, what is the name of the Bhavisha Purana? Have you read the Bhavisha Purana? Yeah, Bhavija Purana is all of our predictions. Uh, yeah, so all of the incarnations, their, or the appearances are already uh, predicted by the sages, or by the Sula uh, in his uh, in his writings. And someone says that it's an incarnation. We want to know which scripture indicates that you're an incarnation. Or, if someone says they are the Vishnu, we have to check their, 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 the sole of their feet, whether it carries the emblems of Lord Vishnu. So, yeah, it's another prediction. It's also there, uh, but I don't remember the exact, the exact literature. Yeah, any other comments? Yeah, sometimes people think that we should have, we should not even have four regulatory principles. <laughs> oh yeah, philosophy is very good, but you know, there are too many rules. Yeah. And the, the practice, to be a practitioner of the Krishna consciousness philosophy is not easy. It's not for everybody. Some people will appreciate from a distance. And if someone has a spiritual master, is connected with a spiritual master, spiritual master gives instruction. Even Lord Chaitanya, he gives difficult instructions to Lord Nityananda. But Nityananda executed just to demonstrate his service orientation. So, <coughs> even Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he gave Prabhupada difficult instruction to go to the West, <laughs> to go and tread where angels dread. That was the instruction of, of Bhakti Siddhanta to Prabhupada. Go and tread where angels dread. Go on to this part. Angels don't take this part. They are afraid they will, be get, they will get killed by decoys. He told Prabhupada, you go on that road. And Prabhupada had to wait for over a decade before he executed that. But eventually he executed the instruction. So to be a disciple is not, it's not a cakewalk. It's not like, you know, eating some gulab jamun. It's a big challenge. But this is the beauty. When you praise the spiritual master, you're guaranteed to go back and back to God. Yes, a prasadam, Bhagavad prasadam, yes, a prasadam, nangatiku tobi. If we are taking the instructions of the spiritual master seriously, our spiritual master, our gateway to, this, to Goloka is open. But not everybody is going to take the spiritual master's instructions seriously. 
Some people have <coughs> are infected by redire dubalia, weakness of heart. Redire dubalia, weakness of heart. Some people are infected by weakness of heart, so they may even hear the best instructions. They may see that the result is there, but you know they are compelled to act in the contrary. They are not able to follow. They are not able to execute the instructions of the spiritual master. It's like the, the phenomenon, phenomenon of the more you see, the less you can really perceive. The less you see, the more you begin to understand that, oh, this is something worth doing. So, yes, a prasada, Bhagavad Prasadu, yes, a prasada, Nangati Kutopi. If we please the special master, Krishna is automatically pleased. And Krishna is automatically pleased what is left. But not everyone has that zeal to please the special master. I've seen in the case, you know, special master gave instructions. Do like this, do like this, do like this. And immediately he left. I've seen so many cases like that. They had the great fortune to receive direct instruction from the Guru. But they do the opposite. So the world is like that. And we have to be courageous to take the instruction of the spiritual master at heart. We have to be courageous to take the instructions of Srila Prabhupada at heart and execute them. Because when we execute the instructions of Prabhupada, uh, we'll be able to please Prabhupada. And he said that those who stay in this movement do service, chant 16 rounds, follow the four regulatory principles. He will personally arrange through the back door of Goloka Vrindavan to get them in. <coughs> so it seems as if we are doing nothing, but this is the promise given by proper. And it's not so easy to wake up every day in the morning to chant Japa. It's not so easy to come to Mangarati every morning. You could be so independent that, you know, you do whatever you like. But no, devotional life means a culture of censorship. Everything is censored. As young, young children, you would have loved to go and be playing with the cold youth day for playing. But here you are. You are using your life in cultivating bhakti, yoga, devotion to Krishna. Not all children have that great fortune, so you are very special people. So take advantage of your, of the great mercy that Lord Chaitanya has bestowed, the great mercy that Lord Nityananda has bestowed on, on you. So yeah, back to bottom line of your question. Yeah, it's not so easy to execute the Guru's order, but when you execute the Guru's order, you're glorious. It's a great fortune. And we should encourage people to understand the need for follow and the need to follow proper instructions. The need to follow execute the guru our guru's instructions. Even the temple management's instruction. You know, we need to understand. When temple management is happy, we are because they're not engaging us in their personal household household affairs. I remember several years ago. Over, over two decades ago, a guru had visited the temple and one of the disciples, he comes to that place, he comes to that country once in a year, and one of the disciples said, she's a lady, she said, she asked a, during question and answers, she asked a question that, Guru Maharaj, you are not here, so how am I to know that I'm pleasing you? So the guru, one of the first 11 gurus in this country, so he said, uh, we have a temple president here, so approach the temple president to get some engagement. And when the temple president is pleased with your service, you should understand that automatically, automatically I'm pleased with you. So because the system, the parampara system, temple management is there, they engage in all of us. And if they're happy with our services, we should understand that our gurus are already 
very much happy with us. Krishna is very much happy with us. So this is this is the process of bounty. This is how it works. Does it make some sense? All right. It's past five minutes past eight already, so a lot of students here engaged in different activities. We may have to um, join this meeting right now for for now. Thank you, and happy Nichinanda Triodasi to all of you. Sri Prabhupada ke jai, Nichinanda Ram ke jai. program is uh, at the college is what time? Oh, in the evening. Okay. I've got a lot, of, a lot of time to relax. All right. So we have some, uh, have some preside up today at the college. Yes. For the programs, for the programs, it's a Thank <laughs> you.